Hey there folks, Scottsdale Travel Chick Sidekick here to present our ultimate visitor guide to Istanbul, Turkey. In this video, we'll cover all the top things you want to see and do, along with details of how best to get around, the top areas to stay, the best times to visit, dining and light life, and much, much more. So stick around, you're going to enjoy this. Okay, let's go. First up, just a bit of background on Istanbul. Istanbul got its start as the ancient Roman colony of Byzantium. Over time, and eventually by the order of the Roman Emperor Constantine the Great, the city became the famous capital of Constantinople and was for nearly 1,000 years the last remaining outpost of the great Roman Empire. Finally, in the mid-1400s, what was left of the Roman Empire, along with Constantinople, was conquered by the Ottoman Sultan Mehmed II, and the city became the seat of the Ottoman Empire for another 500 years, until the Ottomans themselves were defeated during World War I, and Constantinople was occupied by the Allies. Shortly thereafter, the secular Republic of Turkey was born, with Mustafa Kemal Atatürk seen as its innovative founder. That's also the point when Constantinople was renamed Istanbul. Today, Istanbul is a world-class city straddling two continents, sitting across both sides of the Bosphorus River, which is a narrow strait between the Black Sea to the north and ultimately the Mediterranean Sea to the south. It's by far Turkey's most populous city, as well as its cultural and financial hub. It's seldom reported as such due to its sharing a border with Asia and many uncounted immigrants, but Istanbul is also Europe's largest city with almost 20 million people. Despite its overall size and large population, the tourist portion of Istanbul is surprisingly manageable and can be divided roughly into three areas. The Old City or the Sulta Ahmet area, the New City or north of the Golden Horn area, and east of the Bosphorus River, officially on the continent of Asia. Almost all tourist sites are either north or south of the Golden Horn in the old or new city areas. So this guide will focus on these two areas. First up, let's talk a little bit about getting around. Almost all visitors to Istanbul, if not coming by a cruise ship, will arrive to Istanbul's new IST airport, which is about 27 miles northwest of the tourist center. There is no train or subway which will get you all the way to the tourist center. So the best way to get to your hotel really, especially if you have luggage, will be to simply book a car from your hotel or simply take a taxi. Depending on traffic, the transit time from the airport can be anywhere from 40 minutes to two hours. Both Uber and the local taxi app, the Taxi, are available in Istanbul, but unfortunately you can't hail them from the airport, only to come back to the airport. So, you'll need to do your best at negotiating a fare, but expect the cost to be about seven to 800 Turkish Lira, or about 25 to 30 US dollars for a taxi, or about eight to 900 Turkish Lira to reserve a car. Once you're at your hotel and ready to get out and about, it's really best to just walk as much as you can. There are so many awesome nooks and crannies all around town that you'll really be missing out if you don't walk. Plus, most of the major sites are grouped close together, so walking is really the best option anyway. In terms of using Istanbul's transit system, it's really easy and efficient, so don't feel intimidated. There are multiple tram lines, subways, and water taxis to get you around, but in reality, if you're staying near the primary tourist zones, your best option for getting around 
is simply the T1 tram line, which runs from the Old City area up across the Galata Bridge and up through the primary areas of the new city. The cost to ride any of Istanbul's transit options is really cheap, and riding the T1 tram line costs only 20 Turkish lira, or less than one US dollar. And our strong recommendation or pro tip for riding any Istanbul transit, whether it be the subway, the bus, the tram, the ferries, is to use the Istanbul card. It's a citywide electronic touch card which can be preloaded with money and used also by multiple people. So you only need one card for your group. And you can buy it and reload it at any yellow ticket machine at any transit stop. Now, just a few words on taxis. If you absolutely must take a taxi, we highly recommend using the Bataxi app or Uber as simply walking up to a taxi and trying to negotiate a fare will almost, without exception, result in you paying 3x or more the real fare. <laughs> it seems every taxi driver in Istanbul is a wannabe crook. Trust me, use an app. Worst case, Use the price on the app to show the taxi guy what you should pay him and negotiate up from there. Finally, just a quick comment on exchanging money. You will find that US dollars and euros are accepted at many places around Istanbul. But do note, you will get a poor exchange rate. So, it's always best to pay in Turkish lira. The good news is that there are many currency exchanges all around the tourist zones and the exchange rate is really quite competitive. Most exchange agencies are within a couple of percent of the pure exchange rate, and some nearer the Grand Bazaar are less than 1%. That's really good. Now, let's talk about the best times to visit. Istanbul has a temperate oceanic climate with hot and humid summers and colder, wet winters with some occasional snow. And surprisingly, Istanbul has a relatively high annual rainfall of almost 844 millimeters or more than 33 inches. Fun fact, that's more than the city of London. Therefore, there is really no official dry season, but late autumn and winter are the wettest and late spring into summer are the driest. So it's best to avoid the winter months to get the most out of your visit, but expect a little bit of rain no matter what time of year. Where to stay? Most international style accommodations are on the European side of the city and close to the tourist attractions. You can find anything from Ottoman style opulence to basic hostels in any section of Istanbul. So you'll have lots of choices and some very nice options can be had for very little money compared to other parts of Europe. The key, in our opinion, is to stay as close as you can to the main sites you want to see, as traffic tends to be very bad in Istanbul. The more you can walk to what you'd like to see, the better. North of the Golden Horn is a solid area for more local street scenes and dining and nightlife. But our recommendation for the classic Istanbul experience is to stay in the Old City or Sultan Ahmet area. This area will give you the benefit of being able to walk to many of Istanbul's top sites and early in the morning before the crowds arrive. Okay, finally, with all that out of the way, let's get to the top things to see and do in and around Istanbul. I'll group everything into those two main areas I mentioned earlier. Let's start with the old city or the Sultan Ahmet area. The bulk of the history of Istanbul and Constantinople are located here. It's where you'll find most of the historic sites dating back through the Ottoman, Byzantine, and Roman eras. I'll start with what I call the Sultan Ahmet Trifecta. These are the three biggest sites to see in Istanbul. The biggest is probably the Hagia Sophia. Visiting Istanbul without seeing the Hagia Sophia is like visiting Paris without seeing the Eiffel Tower. It's more than 1,500 years old and was the largest cathedral in the world for more than 1,000 years. Over the recent years, it has been converted from a cathedral to a mosque, 
then a museum, and car traversally back into a mosque in 2020. It's an amazing sight to see, and since it's a mosque, it's free to enter. However, to us, the inside was cool, but less impressive than the outside. All right, there she is in her shirt as a scarf in the Hagia Sophia Mosque. This used to be originally a Constantinople temple. Then it was converted to a museum. And then just a few years ago, they converted it back to a mosque. Top Copy Palace is another of these top three sites here. It's big, and it was the center of the Ottoman Empire for more than 400 years and the main residence of the royal family. The outer courtyard area here is free to explore, but the inner area from the second gate onward requires an entry fee, and there's another fee to visit the harem on top of that. Entry is over there on the left, and this is the what they call the first courtyard. And we're headed towards the second courtyard in the main palace. That's actually where the entry is. This is free. Eventually, it'll cost you about 34 euros. And if you do go in, there's some very ornate rooms to check out. The third site of the trifecta here is the Blue Mosque. With its 13 domes and six minarets, it's a sight to behold. And we'd recommend stopping by at night as well, as it's still an awesome sight, but with a completely different feel than in the daytime. However, I'd have to say the inside might be even better. With over 20,000 individual hand-painted tiles, it's also a sight to see. We're at the mosque. Blue mosque. It's not so blue. It just has a lot of these tiles, supposedly blue tiles, 20-some thousand. Beyond these three sites I call the Trifecta, there are plenty more worthy sites in the Old City to take up your time. And the Basilica Cistern is another great one. And I would have to say it's probably the Scottsdale Travel Chick's favorite. It's an ancient underground water reservoir used during the Roman times, which now has a lighting system to show off its beauty and massive size. It's a cool trip back in time and one of the most unique things to do in Istanbul. Pro tip though, the entry line is typically huge, so get there when it opens and book your entry ticket online in advance. If you want to learn more, check out our dedicated video on the Basilica Cistern. Two other biggies in the Old City area not to be missed are the Grand Bazaar and the Spice Market. The Grand Bazaar is a huge maze filled with over 4,000 shops across 61 streets and alleys, selling everything from Turkish carpets to scarves to incense to trinkets to fake Gucci bags and much, much more. Depending on what you're looking for, you can spend an entire day here aimlessly wandering around what seems like endless alleys and unique shops. If you want to learn more about how to tour the Grand Bazaar, see some insider secrets, and a tour guide we'd recommend, check out our dedicated video on it. Just search Grand Bazaar Scottsdale Chick. Anyway, it's another don't miss sight to see in Istanbul, along with the Spice Market. 
It's somewhat close to the Grand Bazaar, but it has a different feel. And don't let the somewhat misleading name deter you. Sometimes also called the Egyptian Bazaar, there are tons of spice vendors here, but it's also home to some of the best sweets, teas, fruit, and snack vendors in Turkey. Trying and buying baklava and all kinds of Turkish delights at the source is one of the great pleasures of Istanbul. Finally, just to round out the sites in the old city, I'll mention two more mosques out of dozens that are worth your time for a look around. One is the Sulimaya Mosque, which is the largest of all the mosques in either the old or new city areas, and it offers up some commanding views. The other is the new or Yeni Mosque near the riverfront and the spice market, with a lot of action going on around it. There are plenty more beyond these, so don't think these are the only ones worth your time. Just get out and explore. Beyond the mosques, there are also a few interesting museums, such as the Grand Palace Mosaic Museum, the Museum of Turkish and Islamic Arts, and the Istanbul Archaeological Museum. Beyond all this, I could go on and on, as there are dozens more interesting sites in the Old City. But I can't cover them all, so I'll finish this section by bridging the Old City and the New City. And that literally means the Galata Bridge. It's a historic two-story bridge where cars and trams transit the top, and tons of people and dozens of seafood restaurants populate the bottom. It's an interesting site to explore and grab a bite to eat, either at one of the restaurants under the bridge or from one of the floating boats selling seafood directly from the water. And here are the ones where you eat in front of these boats. And as a bonus, you'll see tons of local people fishing directly off the bridge every day. It's kind of weird, I'm not sure what they catch here, but it must be good. Lots of people in the city just fishing. Phew, that's a ton of stuff already, right? And I haven't even gotten to the new city area north of the Golden Horn. But before I do, just a quick shout out here that if you're enjoying this video, please give us a thumbs up, a comment too, and better yet, forward it to a few of your friends. And please consider subscribing to our channel to receive more fun, informative travel videos just like this one. Okay, let's now talk about the sites north of the Golden Horn. As you move north from the Galata Bridge I mentioned, you'll come to a number of great sites north of the Golden Horn. The first being the Galata Tower. This 220-foot tower has been around for more than 1,500 years and was built during the reign of Constantine. Although a bit touristy and somewhat expensive to enter, it's worth a stop to see the tower and walk around the interesting areas nearby. If you do decide to go up the tower, the best time is during the sunset call to prayer. The Stiklal Street is the next site you'll come to and it's definitely the coolest street in Istanbul. It's a pedestrian only street almost one mile long running from near the Galata Tower up to Taksim Square. Along this street, there's lots to see, and here are just a few things. Check out the famous Flower Passage. It's a glass-enclosed street full of lively restaurants and taverns. Nearby is the Nevezade Street and its nightlife. This is the premier nightlife area in Istanbul and a good place to grab a bite as well. I'll talk more about this area later in the video. St. Anthony Catholic Church is here too. It's one of the few Christian churches still in Istanbul and worth a quick stop. Finally, just another fun point about this street is that it has a cool heritage street tram you can ride along its length. There's lots more to see along this street, so don't miss it. As you reach the northern end of Istaklo Street, you'll come to Taksim Square. This is the central square in all of Istanbul. Here is where major political events and country celebrations are held, 
and it's a general gathering place for locals during the weekends. The square and its associated park are a perfect place to spend a couple of hours exploring and just watching people. From the Taksim Square area, you can walk or take the short Katabas Incline Railway down to the Bosphorus River for two more great sites. The first is the Katabas Ferry Pier. This is the location for many types of Bosphorus River cruises. From two-hour scenic day cruises, to a multitude of dinner cruises, to more distant cruises up to the Black Sea area piers, and day trips out to the Prince Islands. Both of those, by the way, are great day trip ideas if you have the time. However, of all the cruise choices you'll have here, I'd most recommend taking one of the dinner cruises. They're quite affordable at around 35 to 40 US dollars per person. And in addition to the dinner and the performances on board, you'll have great, beautiful nighttime views out along the river. Just north of these ferry piers is the biggie on the north side of the Golden Horn, the Dolme Bache Palace. I'd say this is another of the must-see sites in Istanbul. This place is extravagant. It was the home of the last great Ottoman sultans. It replaced the older Topkapi Palace we talked about earlier. During its prime, it was built to compete with other great palaces of Europe and has 285 rooms as well as 68 toilets. It's quite impressive and the riverfront gardens aren't too shabby either. Finally, if you have the additional time, you're welcome to walk maybe 20 minutes further north past the Domabache Palace to see more palatial riverfront homes of bygone eras until you come to Ortakoy Square. Ortakoy Square is another great square with the bonus of it being on the waterfront. Here you'll find cafes and small shops to explore, as well as the beautiful Ortakoy Mosque, great views of the Bosphorus River Bridge nearby, and ferries which will take you back down to the Old City area. Finally, the last section of our ultimate guide is just a bit on dining and nightlife topics. Regarding dining, I'm not going to tell you our choice for the best Turkish restaurant or anything like that. There are just so many choices. So just get out and explore the interesting side streets and pick something. It's hard to go wrong. However, I will give you two general suggestions on eating and drinking. First, try out a rooftop view restaurant around the Salta Ahmet Square area. There are a number to choose from and obviously some great views. The other tip I have is a couple of secret riverfront picks. Surprisingly, there are very few choices and the busy seafood restaurants around the Galata Bridge area don't count. It's just too crazy there. I call these our secret tips as I believe no other guide will tell you about these two choices. One is the Sarai Bruni K at the end of the Guhana Park Walk I mentioned earlier. This restaurant sits on a prominent point with some of the best views anywhere in Istanbul and it's little known to most tourists. The other is actually the cafe at the Domabache Palace but again actually few people know about it as it's just outside the palace and in the back of a parking lot. Despite its weird location it's also a great place right on the water to watch all the maritime activity on the Bosphorus with a tasty drink in hand. And here we are, this is the outside, right on the Bosphorus, quiet, no traffic, great place. Next up, it's not food and it's not drinking, but you really must try a Turkish bath or hammam if you come to Istanbul. The Turkish bath experience has been a fixture of the culture in this area for more than 1,500 years, and there is at least one historical hammam in each neighborhood of Istanbul. 
There's a wide variety of quality from classical thousand year old hammams to very modern choices, but our suggestion is to do it right with an old style experience. If you want to know the secrets of what happens in Turkish baths, check out our dedicated video on it. Just search what happens in Turkish baths. Coming back to food, at least sort of, you also need to try one of the ice cream vendors. It's not only a treat, but a bit of entertainment too. Made famous worldwide by the internet, grabbing or trying to grab an ice cream cone from one of these tricky vendors isn't so easy. Plus, this ice cream has a little different texture than what you're used to. In terms of nightlife, there are two primary places nearest the tourist zones. Both are on the north side of the Golden Horn. The most famous and popular is the Nevezad Street area just off Istakil Street I mentioned earlier. Here the music is loud, the drinks flow, and it's a great place to wind down after a long day. Hi. Would you like this hot tea? No, I know. Thank you. What do you mean? Good fish. The second option, with a more interesting mix of locals, is the Galata Hill area. The slopes going down from the Galata Tower have an eclectic mix of dining and drinking choices to fill your nights. Finally, for those who like this type of thing, I can't really miss mentioning the Turkish water pipe or hookah or norgal. Today, many locals still consider it one of life's greatest pleasures and it's something interesting to try if you're up for it. Wow, huh? That was a lot, but I think we packed it in nice and tight for you and hopefully gave you a great feel for what Istanbul has to offer. We hope you enjoy. Did we miss any of your favorites? Or do you have a secret tip you'd like to share? Please let us know in the comments section below and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more fun, informative travel videos just like this one. Until next time, see you later from Istanbul.